You know, the Leafs are in kind of a unique situation where they don't really need that. You know, you want to go into the playoffs playing well, but they know where they're sitting uh, with nine games to go. What are your thoughts on on where they're at generally and, you know, sort of the uh, just playing out the string here, how, how, how they need to go about that finishing these nine games? The million dollar question. And I don't believe there's an answer because until you go through it, you don't know. And then you look back on it is can a team be as like Tampa bored out of their minds, finishing off this friggin' thing. They know they're going to finish where they are. Toronto knows they're going to finish where they are. You know, the coaching staffs are trying to do their damnedest to keep the intensity level up, keep that pace of game up, keep the players a bit on edge because Soon these playoffs are going to start. When the playoffs start, as we all know, they start at zero. Everyone starts on the same line again. And if you try to go from a team that's going through the motions to a team that has to, to pick it up against a team who's been picking it up for quite a while, that's when you get stung. And so you got to really be careful. But for the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, and, and the Tampa Bay Lightning, and they know they're going to be opponents, I think both teams realize they don't care whether they start at home or on the road. And that was proved out last year. And people talk about, you know, the home team. Seriously, nowadays, you think if we don't game, win game one, we're really in a must-win situation already in a series. So teams don't care whether they start at home or on the road. Getting game seven at home is important. But for the Maple Leafs, like, yeah, I mean, they're trying to play good hockey going into the playoffs. So they're ready to rock and roll because they're going to be playing a team that I think is going to try to flip a switch. And, and I'm really curious to see if if they can do it i think they have done it in the past a little bit but i don't think john cooper's been buying it i I think there's some real concern there but i think the players are like hey okay let's just get through this we've done this been there we you know bought the t-shirt uh let's just get this going we're talking to gary galley former nhler analyst for sportsnet and hockey night in canada uh Listening to you last night on the Stutzel goal that took the Panthers out, and I think you uttered the words, he, he's got to have that or something of that nature. It's, it's almost the, the fear of the Leaf fan right now is that they're in the first round or they, they find a way to get to Boston maybe if, if they advance and it's Samsonov or Matt Murray and they got to have that save. Um, it just where this this whole thing has gone with the goaltending and you know for me i'm watching again bobrovsky last night and i'm i'm even wondering how did he last this long that he's still in this position and we're still having comments like he's he should have that or he that's one he'd like back years after we've known for quite a while that you know maybe he should be gone by now maybe they, they should have tried something else De- definitely uh, bobrovsky has never uh, you know, I don't think played up to the billing card uh, since he's been in Florida. He's had moments of greatness there, uh, and he's had moments where it looks like he's it, it's gonna it, it, it's coming back. But I don't think he's ever really got uh, to where everyone thought he was going to be or where he was at, at points prior to that. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it, it continues to be a bit of a thorn for Florida as <laughs> excuse me as they go through. Uh, the Bobrovsky, you know, contract and, and and deciding to keep him and move forward with him. I think Matt Murray's an interesting story where he's a two, two-time two Stanley Cup champion, came in for a flurry uh, in, in junctures of both cups and, and was able to do it. But, uh, you know, since since then, it, it's been a bit of a roller coaster for him, and I don't think he's made anybody feel any less queasy um, getting on the, getting on the uh, Space Mountain here with him uh, that he's going to be able to pull it off. I think it everybody's got a huge question mark there, or can he stay healthy through the playoffs? I mean, that's the other thing. If he was to be the guy, could he literally stay healthy? Uh, and, and I think Ilya Samsonov is the, is the guy. I think he's, um, you know, he's put up the better numbers. I think he's, he's had the better run, especially he had that great run at home. I think he's given you a little more, um, a, a little more substance for you to say, if we're going to start, let's start with the, with this guy. He, you know, he's, I think he's earned it. So, but it's still going to be a bit of a roller coaster ride. But it's going to be like that for a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams that don't have uh, the goaltending that they want to have. You know, very few teams, you know, have that stud in the net. And uh, and Calgary thought they had one, and look what happened there. And Tampa Bay has got, which they everyone thinks is the best goalie in the world. And and he's had moments of where he's got a bit of uh, a bit of rust look like, and, and and maybe getting a bit tired. That team's played a lot of hockey in the last three four years, and um, so. 
Uh, a lot to be told still. I think a lot of teams are going in with uncertainty in their net. Um, you know, you, you know, guys who haven't been there, like, look at, you know, Darcy Kemper. I mean, who, I mean, I mean it's like, you know, you think, okay, Colorado is a great team, but you know, in the net, do they have what it, that it takes? And then you have, till you do it, you don't know. And uh, so I think there's a lot of teams like that. Toronto is right in line with a lot of them. Uh, I, I get that the Boston Bruin goaltender is, could be up for the Hart Trophy, certainly going to win the Vezina, uh, but he hasn't been through the grueling part of the playoffs yet, has he? And that's going to be a question that has to be answered still for a team that is going to win the President's Trophy running away. So, yeah, I mean, someone told me a couple of days ago, and I've heard the line before, and I always chuckle when I hear it, that they shouldn't name the game goaltending, not hockey. And I said that last night on the broadcast because really does a lot of it come down to, uh, you know, your goaltending. Do they do they let in that goal that you're talking about, Nick? That one that he beats him, you go, he should have had that. That's one he's got to have. And, and he you know, he can't afford to let that in at that time. And, you know, uh, you know do you have that goaltender that is going to allow some goals, but the timing of the saves is what matters. Does he make the right saves at the right time to get your team wins in the playoffs? And uh, that's going to be something we're all going to find out. One of the questions they're also grappling with is, you know, everyone has told the Leafs about defense. They, they're saying, hey, you, you got to have eight guys. You got to have nine guys. Kip and I have talked about it, and I think it's kind of consensus. You go deep, you need a lot of good D-men. Problem for them now is they have a lot of good D-men who are asked to watch hockey games. Where do you stand on the importance of getting those guys involved? Does Connor Timmins need a game or two? Do you need Gustafson in for seven to nine games, or can they just say, hey, we think these are going to be our six guys in playoffs, so that's who we're going to run with? I, I, I'm a believer when when you hit that playoff and you've got those nine guys, there's going to be a depth chart, and the depth chart's going to be what it is, and it's up to the player when his number gets called to step in and not just not just have in the back of his mind, well, I haven't played in a month. He has in the, he has in the back of his mind, I'm going to be nails tonight, and I'm not going to be the reason why um, we don't have a opportunity to win, and I don't want to be the reason why. So, um, you know, I'm going to come in and I'm going to plug a hole and I'm going to, I'm going to plug it as hard as I can and do the best that I can. And everyone around him is going to understand that he hasn't played a lot. Everyone around him is going to understand he hasn't had many reps. But at the end of the day, it speaks volumes for the player, for the guy who steps in and just, and just plays and just plays. And, uh, and even if he goes through a game and, you know, sometimes coaches will say this and I, I always like, I think that's such a smart thing. Just because you go through a game and you don't really do anything, you don't get anything, but you don't give anything and you just break even, maybe that's just great for you. You know, you don't give anything to the guy across from you. You didn't get anything, but you didn't give anything. And every shift you go off and that happens in the Stanley Cup playoffs and you don't hurt your team, it is a good shift. And uh, games are going to be tighter, are going to be close. And uh, I agree with you guys. You need good 8-9 defensemen because, man, the injury bug can bite you in one game in a series. I mean, you could lose some key pieces. And if you don't have quality people to bring in, um, you know, and, and you look over in the back in years gone and years ago when they brought guys in into the lineup that had significant, uh, uh, you know, differences for a team and helped them go on and win Stanley Cups. I mean, it, it happens and you just have to want to be that guy and not worry about what didn't happen, worry about what's going to happen. 